Hello everybody, I'm Rusty. I want to welcome you to Island Breeze Tropicals. So today we're going to be taking another look at Brunmeliad anatomy and we're going to be looking at something called an inflorescence. So you know what? The sun is shining, the island breeze is blowing. It's time that you and I got growing. Come on, let's have some fun and let's look at what an inflorescence is. Okay, so the best way to describe what an inflorescence really is, is to show you its different parts. And we're going to go to a number of different kinds of inflorescence. I'm going to call them inflows. It's a lot easier. Now look, it's okay if you want to call this a flower, but if what we want to do is be accurate about the parts of the plants that we like to have fun growing, uh, that would not be entirely accurate. And I'm going to show you why right now. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. And I'm going to show you a flower. And the flower is this structure right here. Okay, so I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but right here is the flower. And here's another one. So what you see in these tiny structures that look like petals, well, they're not petals at all. They are potential flowers on this Bilbergia. Hopefully this gives you a better idea and you can really see the pollen structures. You can see the stamens and the pistils of the flowers. So all those little things coming out of the inflow are not petals. They are the real true flowers of this plant. Now, Bilbergias, by and large, have a very short period of bloom. In general, they only bloom for about two to three and a half weeks max. And my experience with pyramid alice is you've got probably about a week and then it's going to fade. But gee whiz, who cares when you get something that is this bright? And here is another close-up shot, you can see the stamens and pistils on the open flower that's on the right and on the left you can see some that have not opened yet. So this is an ecmia growing out in the tangle and fortunately I have two of these plants and one has an emerging inflow on it and the other is completely out and we'll show you that in just a second but this is a good chance to show you this is called a bract now there are some places that you will see them online that will call the inflorescence a bract it is not the bracts as you can see are modified leaves that are on the inflorescence and in a lot of cases it's the bracts that will have some of the best color now you can see that this inflorescence is still forming. Let me see if I can get a better view of this. And you can see that these potential flower structures have not fully developed. And this is uh, the same clump, a different plant, Remember, each bromeliad that has an inflorescence in the middle of the tank can only have one in its entire life. But take a look at this wonderful color. Now you can see the bracts that are right here. See that right there? Let me pull that back. You can see where that's a modified leaf. It adds color. Um, but... Take a look at all of the color on this. And I'm going to try and get down there. I want to show you each one of these structures that look like berries are potential flowers. 
So if you take a look, right in the center of the frame, you can see a white structure coming out of that berry-like flower base, and that is the true flower. So if you take a look right in the center of the frame, um, you will see there are what look to be two little spears of petals coming out of those potential flowers, and that is the flower on this ecmia. So as you can see, there's a lot of potential flowers, and if they get fertilized, there's a lot of potential fruit. Now here's another inflorescence. Um, now this one is older and has faded, but you can see the uh, russet color bracts. Here is another uh, view of one. So one more time, this really is an inflorescence. Um, it is not a bract, and the bracts are structures on the inflorescence. This, by the way, is on an Ecmia orlandiana. This is the inflorescence of a portia called candy. Um, you can see the flower structures, and then down below, take a look at the bracts, and along with the stem of this inflorescence, gives it that nice magenta color. You can see the foliage in the background. Uh, this portia really will get a little, eh, kind of red, uh, a little russet more than, uh, than bright red, but this is growing in the shade. But there is enough sun in here so that it can make energy enough to get this inflorescence. But not all bromeliads are created equal. Believe it or not, this is an inflorescence. And Neoregelia, that's a family that we've talked about on one of the episodes of Bromeliad Family Tree. You should watch that video. Neoregelias will never get an inflorescence that rises above the cup. Now let me get down in there, see if we can show you. Okay, so you can see it's almost completely surrounded by water. And if you take a look at those little white structures, those are the actual flowers. Now, it does not open up probably any more than maybe four or five, sometimes six. But it's always about that number, and there's never a huge uh, profusion of them. And as you can see, that inflow is completely surrounded by water. So anyway, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed looking at some of the different inflorescence that you can get on your bromeliads. So no matter where you are, I do hope your sun is shining. I hope you have an island breeze blowing. And I know that you need to keep growing and have lots of fun. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.